going to talk about the different types of numbers that we have. And we're basically going to follow the same progression that you learned math starting in when you were growing up. The first thing usually kids learn how to do is count. And the first type of numbers we have are the natural numbers. And the natural numbers have the symbol capital N. And these are our counting numbers. One, two, three, on up. So you first learn how to count. Figure out, count how many of each type of item there is. And that gives us our natural numbers. Then the next thing we did is we started, if I have three things and I eat like three apples and I eat two of them, I have one apple left, so that started subtraction things. Well, we needed a way to represent not having anything at all, okay? And that was the number zero. And once I add the number zero in, I have what is called the whole numbers. The whole numbers have the symbol capital W and it contains all of the natural numbers plus the number zero. So our whole numbers are zero, one, two, three, and on. And then the next thing that progressed is we learned the concept of negative numbers, okay? Um, owing somebody something is the original concept of where the negative numbers came in. And if we take all of the natural numbers, zero, and all the negatives of the natural numbers, we have a group of numbers which is called integers. And okay, and the integers have the symbol Z, which is the first letter in the German representation for the word integer. And it starts out at negative infinity, goes to negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, three all the way up to infinity. Okay, the next thing we learned how to do is we learned how to take parts of numbers. Okay, and what that gave us is our rational numbers. Okay, and our rational numbers have the symbol Q And the definition of a rational number is any number that can be written as A over B, where consistency, where A and B are integers. is not equal to zero. Okay. Every one of my integers can be written in this way. So every one of my whole numbers and every one of my natural numbers can be written in this way. So all of my rational numbers
are basically things that can be written as fractions, where the denominator is not equal to zero. Okay? Properties of these rational numbers, things that you can tell if something's a rational number, either has a terminating decimal, a repeat or a repeating decimal. Okay. Well, you should know from your earlier studies in math that we have some decimals that don't repeat at all. And that gives us our next group of numbers. And that would be the irrational numbers. Okay, there is no new symbol for irrational numbers. Um, basically, something is irrational, which means it is not rational. We have to put a little um, disclaimer on that not rational, and we'll do that when I like classify what the group of rational and irrational numbers are. Um, oh, sometimes you may see a symbol like this, which is the mathematical symbol for not, so not Q. Sometimes books use a tilde for the not which would say not Q. All of these numbers combined, the ra rational and irrational numbers combined, give us what we call our real numbers. And this is where some students start to get confused. Because the other type of numbers we have, so first thing I'll do is I'll write down real. And it has the symbol R. Because the next type of number we have are imaginary numbers. which has the symbol I. And here's something I want to talk about. Our real numbers are no more real than our imaginary, and our imaginary numbers are no more imaginary than our real numbers. All of our numbers were made up by man. Okay, we made up this number system. Okay, it's unfortunate that they called these imaginary numbers. These imaginary numbers, um, you'll find a lot in electricity, electronics, um, portions of physics. The use of the imaginary number system is widespread in those. Okay, So the way you tell the difference between a real number and an imaginary number is an imaginary number is any number that contains an even root of a negative number. Okay. Um, some examples of this would be the square root of negative 1, um, square root of negative 12, the sixth root of negative 10. Any even root of a negative number is imaginary. I forgot to give you symbols of irrational numbers. Some of the um, irrational numbers are pi. You know it does not um, 
decimal never terminates. It goes on forever. You may have seen or may not have seen Euler's number, which is the lowercase letter e. And this is another number that never repeats. Starts at 2.71828, keeps on going. Any non-perfect root So square root of 2, square root of 3. Square root of 4 is rational because the square root of 4 is 2, and 2 can be written as 2 over 1, which meets our definition of rational. The cube root of 5 is irrational, but the cube root of 8 is not irrational. The cube root of 8 is rational because 2 times 2 times 2 is 8, and so... The cube root of 8 is 2, and 2 over 1 can be written as a fraction of integers. This entire number system is called our complex number system. And a complex number is any number that can be written as a plus bi, where a and b are real, and i is equal to the square root of negative 1. If the b portion here is 0, which is a real number, I have a purely real number. If the a portion is 0 and b is not 0, then I have a purely imaginary number. So any number I can write, any one number on here I can write as a complex number. For example, the number 5, I can write as 5 plus 0 i. The square root of negative 1, I could write as 0 plus 1 i. Normal way you would see this one written would just be 5. Normal way you would see this one written would just be i. So just a quick overview of the types of numbers. Um, typically when I'm writing on the board and I'm referencing a number system, I'll put double strikes on the vertical lines. So you can tell it's just not a capital R, but it's the R that means the real numbers. Um, what you need to be able to do is you need to be able to classify numbers into what type of system they belong to. Up to seventh grade, you needed to be able to classify up to the rational numbers, things that are rational. Um, by the end of eighth grade, early freshman year, you're going to add the irrational. You need to tell me which ones are not rational. When you get into Algebra 2, and if we have time in geometry classes, we will talk about the imaginary numbers, and you also need to be able to classify whether or not a number is imaginary. So by the time you're a junior and you take your Smarter Balance Test or the SAT or ACT, you need to be able to classify numbers. If I give you a number, which number system or systems it belongs to. For example, the number 1 is natural, whole, an integer, it's rational, real, and complex. So you need to be able to check every box it would belong to. Or if I ask you what is the most specific one for it, if I tell you the number 3, most specific one for 3 would be a natural number. Most specific number for 5 fourths would be a rational number. Okay, So you need to be able to classify numbers. You need to be able to reproduce this diagram. It doesn't have to be exactly like this. Um, a lot of people will start with the natural numbers in the center, then they'll put a, give you an example, they'll do natural numbers in the center, then after the natural numbers they'll put whole numbers, then after whole numbers they'll put integers, then after the integers they will put their Q, which is the rational, our not Q, which is irrational, 
all of these are real. And then they continue on like I did, adding the imaginary. I don't care how you represent the diagram, but you need to be able to place numbers within things on the diagram. 